And Jane Goodall joins me now from her home in Bournemouth. Uh, Dr Goodall, that was, of course, fascinating footage. I wish we could have watched a, a bit more of that. But um, in general, what can you tell us about the way diseases jump from wild animals to humans? Well, you know, the tragic thing about this pandemic is that it's been predicted for a very, very, very long time by people studying these so-called zoonotic diseases. And those are the diseases that jump from animals to people. And we are increasingly creating conditions, environments in which this can happen. And those include um, the animal trafficking, which brings animals together from different parts of the world, animals who are destined to be sold for entertainment, for food, for whatever purpose. Uh, there are the wild, wildlife uh, markets in Asia, in Africa, where it's known as the bushmeat trade, and also the factory farms in, in the, you know, the now all over the world, where we breed cows and pigs and chickens in these terrible conditions. And all of these conditions are creating environments which enable and encourage viruses to jump and other pathogens too from animals across the species barrier into people. This has been known, but we have chosen to ignore it. Or at least our leaders have chosen to ignore it. You must have given these warnings yourself over many, many years. Did anyone in power ever listen to you? Um, people have. Yes, um, not about, I haven't been talking about pandemics, but I've been talking about, uh, you know, disrespect of the natural world and the animals living in it. And yes, a lot of people have listened. And we have now a youth program, which is in 65 countries and growing. And the message is every single one of us makes an impact every single day. And we have a choice as to what sort of impact we're going to make. And so, Yes, there are people in high places, in government, in, in industry, who listen, who get it. And our Roots and Shoots program with the young people, they are influencing their parents and their grandparents, many of whom may actually be the heads of, of um, big uh, corporations or people in government. So how should countries stop the wildlife trade, trafficking, and these dangerous wildlife markets? Well, I don't know how they should. I know they, they should. I don't know how. Um, but it, it really needs governments to come in and really play an important role here and say, we know that these conditions are conducive to another pandemic. And the, just imagine, OK, this uh, COVID-19 is incredibly contagious, but it's not that many of the people can, who, are, who are infected who die. Now imagine another pandemic where it's equally contagious, but the, the percentage of people who die is greater. That's what we can And so we really need to have people understand and governments understand that it's going to happen if we don't start respecting nature and treating animals. I mean, we're, we're treating animals today as commodities, things that are there for us to eat, things without feelings and personalities and emotions. It's not true. And if we could learn to live in a way of harmony with the natural world and stop invading the, the uh, nature's last remaining habitats and start respecting the wild animals who are part of this amazing tapestry of life. Um, that, that, that's what we need to do. How we do I don't know, but I fight for it. Uh, very briefly, Dr Goodall, you normally travel, of course, to do your work. What kind of work can you do under these conditions not being able to travel? I tell you, you know, I thought I, I thought I couldn't do more than I did. I now find that's not true. That now that I'm grounded in the in the house I grew up in in the UK, um, I'm more exhausted by what I'm doing to 
to reach out into the virtual reality world. Uh, you know, um, it, it's more exhausting than actually being on a tour. <laughs> and so it's video messaging, it's podcasts, it's interviews, it's just sending out messages to people all over the world. It's extremely exhausting. <laughs> I think the message is getting further than it went before. Do you think that this is a punctuation point for the world, that once this epidemic, pandemic is under control, the message of preserving wildlife habitats, if not for the protection of animals, then simply for the protection of humans, will now get across to everyone? This is what I pray. This is where my fingers are crossed. And it's not just wild animals. Let's make it clear. It's not just the wildlife markets of Asia and um, Africa, but it's also the factory farming that we do. Many, many epidemics have begun from these crossovers from domestic animals to people. Um, the pray, the, what I pray is that we come out of this understanding. I mean, think how many millions of people have never before breathed fresh air in the big cities, have never seen the stars in the night sky. Will there be enough millions to pressure the the corporations and the governments so that, that so that we do not go back to business as usual, so that we understand that for a better world, which we now see can happen, a better world, we need to have different uh, different different um, legislation. Please, please let the big corporations and the governments around the world understand. We need to have a different way of thinking. But we cannot have unlimited economic development on a planet of finite natural resources. But animals have feelings, emotions, personality, just like us. Let's respect them. Let's respect nature. Did the world learn enough from previous epidemics that you must have studied in the 1980s and 1990s? Well, I mean... We, we haven't learned from it, have we? We know that um, HIV AIDS began from um, people eating monkeys and chimpanzees in Africa. We know about the origin of uh, COVID-19 and SARS from the animal markets in China. We know about MERS starting from camels in the Middle East. We know about swine flu and, and um, bird flu. I mean, we know all this, but we have chosen, or at least, uh, governments and big business have chosen to ignore it because they want to carry on with business as usual so the rich can get richer and they don't care about the poor getting poorer. And let's tie it into climate crisis because as we destroy of the course. natural world and increase the likelihood of viruses uh, leaping from animals to people, we're also, uh, we're also creating the conditions that's warming up the surface of the planet leading to the climate crisis which is i mean of, of course all that because of this pandemic of and it's all connected dr jane goodall thank you so much